Welcome back to another Roblox Studio tutorial. In today's video, I'm going to show you another way that you can open up your shop menu, and this is by clicking on part of the shop. So if I click on the shop sign, it opens up this little window here that I could put my shop items on. All right, let's go ahead and dive in and see how we can do this in Roblox Studio. All right, so for this video, I'm using a simple shop that you can find in the toolbox. If you want to use a different one, that's completely fine and you should be able to follow along. What you're going to do is you're going to locate your shop model over here in the Explorer menu. And then you're just going to open it up and take a look at some of the parts. And what you want to do is find a part that's somewhere near the front of the shop so that players can click on it. And after looking through some of the parts, I decided to use the shop sign. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rename this part to something that's easy to remember. So in this case, I just renamed this part to sign. And then what you're going to do for this part is add a click detector to it. After that, you can go and create your menu. And I created my menu by going under the starter GUI, then adding a screen GUI. Under the screen GUI, I added a frame. And inside the frame, I added a text button. So when I did that, this is what it looks like. So I have a simple frame with a button that looks like a close button. After you do that, we're going to add a local script underneath the frame. Inside the script, we're going to start by referencing the part that you want to click on. So in my case, I'm going to say local part is equal to game dot workspace. It's going to be inside the shop model. And then inside the shop model, I'm going to be looking for the sign part. That's why it's important to give that part a new name so that it's easy to remember right here. Next, we're going to create a couple more variables. The first one is going to be for the click detector underneath the part. So we're going to say local click is equal to part dot click detector. Then we're going to create a variable for the frame by saying local frame is equal to script dot parent. After that, we need to create one for the close button. So we're going to say local close button is equal to frame dot text button. If you want to rename that to something else, then you can do that. You just have to update it right here as well. Okay, we want the frame to be invisible when it starts, so we're going to say frame dot visible is equal to false. And then we're going to create two functions, one for opening the shop and one for closing the shop. The first one, we're going to say local function. We're going to call this one open shop. Inside the function, we're going to say frame dot visible is equal to true. And then for the other one, we're going to say local function. This one will be close shop. Inside here, we're going to say frame dot visible is equal to false. And then down at the bottom, we'll just define our two different events. So we need to define event for when the sign is clicked, and then also when the close button is clicked. We're going to start with the first one by saying click dot mouse click. So this is when the sign is clicked. We're going to connect this to our open shop function. And the other one is when the X button inside of our frame is clicked. And we can do that by saying close button dot mouse button one click colon connect and then close shop all right and that's all there is to it so let's go ahead and check it out and make sure we didn't make any mistakes so now what I can do is I can go up to the shop sign and click on it and then my frame appears and one more thing we'll add to this before we end with this video is you probably don't want your player to be able to walk around while the menu is open. So let's go ahead and add some stuff to the script so that when the menu is open, the player is frozen. And then when they close the menu, they can walk again. To do that, we need to start by defining the local player. And we're going to start that by saying local players is equal to game colon get service. Inside the parentheses, we're going to put players. And then after that, we're going to say local player is equal to players dot local player. There's a number of different ways of doing this, so just choose your preferred way of getting to the local player. After that, inside the open shop function, we can say player dot character dot humanoid dot walk speed. And we're going to set this equal to zero so the player can't walk. 
And then when they close the shop, we're going to do something very similar. But instead of setting it equal to zero, we're going to set it back to the default, which is 16. So now if I run the game with the new updates, I can still click on the shop to open up the frame here. But when I do that, my player can't move around until I close the shop. Alright, so this is going to be the end of this video. I have other videos on Shop GUI, which I'll link in the description. In those other videos, we open up the shop by touching a part in front of it. So this video was mainly meant to just be an alternate way of opening up the shop. And then you can use the other videos to create your shop menu. Alright, I hope you enjoyed, and stay tuned for the next one.